Okay, next up, we're going to talk about logarithms. I've left the, uh, this graph up on the, on the board here for exponential functions, right? So remember, for, for a base a, where a is positive, we can talk about these exponential functions, right? If a is bigger than 1, we have these ones growing like that, right? 2 to the x, 3 to the x, in between we have e to the x, the natural exponential. Um, so logarithms, the reason we're, we're leading into logarithms from exponentials is that logarithms are, are defined as the, as the inverse of, of the exponential, right? So, so if I give you you know, y is equal to a to the x, and I want to take the logarithm base a of y, what I get is x, okay? So in other words, um, you have this cancellation property, um, which we know we, we have in general for inverse functions, right? Um, so we know that log base a of a to the x is equal to x, and we know that if I did a to the power log a of x, that also gives me x. Okay? Um, so the logarithm is, is defined as an inverse. Um, so another, another way that you could say this is that um, y equals a to the x if and only if x is equal to log base a of y. Or another way you might say this is if f of x is equal to a to the x, then its inverse function is the logarithm. So what a logarithm does is you feed it a number, right? So suppose you, you feed it some number, let's say this y that we have here, right? So you plug y into your logarithm. So what does the logarithm do? What the logarithm does is it gives you the answer to the following question. That question being, if I were to write y as, as an exponent, as, as a power, if I were to write y as a power with base a, what exponent would I need, right? So what power do I have to raise a to to get y. That's what the logarithm is answering for you, right? So that means that, for example, if I wanted to know what is the base 2 log of, let's say, 16, I say, oh, well, how do I write 16 as a power of 2? And I say, okay, well, 16 is 2 to the 4. And the logarithm gives me the exponent. So my answer is 4, right? Um, so, so that's the basic idea of a logarithm. Now, most of the time, you don't get lucky, and you're, the number you're plugging in there is not a, a perfect power for the, for the base that you're working with. And so you're not going to get a nice round number out. You're probably going to get something fairly complicated, right? But um, it gives you a starting point. It gives you some idea of what you're working with here. The other thing you can do is you can now work out what the graph should look like for a logarithm, right? Um, so if this is what the graph looks like for an exponential function, let's put it down here. Okay. So if we have some exponential function like this, so here is y equals a to the x. Okay, here's the line y equals x, which you might reflect across. And so remember, the, the basic idea with inverse is, is you're kind of, you're interchanging the role of x and y here, right? Um, so if, if, if x, y is a point on the graph of y equals a to the x, then, then y, x is a point on the graph of the, of the logarithm. And, and so everything kind of 
reflects across. So that means that, you know, if we had, so this point here is always 0, 1, which means that 1, 0 must be a point on the graph of the natural log. Okay. Um, as, as x gets small, as x goes to minus infinity, y gets close to 0. So we, we interchange those roles. As y goes to minus infinity, x goes to 0. So that means there's now this vertical asymptote along the x-axis. So you have that sort of behavior going down. And then it's going to come up and head off that way, right? So y equals log base a would look like that. And of course, if a is between 0 and 1, then, then we, we reflect everything across, right? That's going to go that way. The log is going to go that way. Um, and we can deal with that as well. Uh, so that's the basic definition of, the, of, the, of, a, of a logarithm, log base a. Um, most of the time, and let's just add this in as our last point here um, for notation. And then in the next video, we're going to look at properties. Um, so when you're working with the natural exponential, the log base e, In most calculus textbooks, we write ln for natural log, okay? Ln of x um, is the natural log. So ln of x is the inverse of the natural exponential e to the x. Um, one, uh, one word of warning, one word of caution. Um, there, there are some notational discrepancies. In most calculus books that are sort of targeted towards science and engineering, this is the notation you're going to see um, almost universally for the natural log. Um, in textbooks that are geared towards pure math students, like math majors who aren't planning to do anything in the sciences, um, sometimes if you see just log with no base indicated, the assumption is that that's the natural log. Because for, for mathematics, for pure mathematics, base E is really the only base that you care about working in. You don't really care about other bases. So you just stick to base E. Um, and uh, so you just write log for the log. You kind of treat it as there's only one log. Um, but, uh, but in the sciences, if you write log with no base, sometimes that's interpreted as base 10. Um, so if you see log without a base, you really need to ask yourself what the context is. Uh, am I in kind of a math context, and then it's probably base E? Am I in a science context, in which case it's probably base 10, right? Um, if you want to avoid the ambiguity and you're working with natural logs, you can write LN to be safe.